Hi everyone, this is Terry from Tangerine Mountain Imports and Designs. We are your kimono vendor that you see at Kentia Hall every year at Anime Expo. Now, unfortunately, we can't be together with you guys again this year, but the folks at Anime Expo asked us to curate a special exhibition of kimono that fuses together historical pieces and ensembles that represent some of your favorite characters from some pretty popular series like, oh, I don't know, Demon Slayer or Sailor Moon or Nudoni Kenshin. You know, just minor shows like that, right? In our quest to expand the information that's available in English about traditional Japanese clothing, we've amassed a collection of historical pieces that are hundreds of years old, and we have hundreds of these pieces. So we took a deep dive into our collection to try to find the perfect pieces that could be put together in an ensemble to represent some of the characters that we chose. Our goal in this exhibition is to show you that the things that you see your favorite characters wearing in anime and manga actually correspond to real pieces of clothing that people wore over the course of the last several hundred years in Japan. Also, we have a special treat for you. It's one of our newest acquisitions, and it forms some of the foundation of the kimono that followed in the centuries after. So we're going to be showing you a kosode from the 1700s. Thank you for tuning in to this special exhibition brought to you by Tangerine Mountain Imports and Designs and Anime Expo 2021. We hope that you learn a lot about kimono through the lens of your favorite anime. We're very excited to bring you this last part of the exhibition. It's been our goal at Tangerine Mountain to keep expanding our collection of historical garments as far back in time as we possibly can to include Kosode, which were basically the forerunners to the kimono as we know it. Many of our customers over the last several years have asked us how to cosplay characters from shows like Inuyasha. But it's a little difficult to do with modern day kimono because the garments that were worn prior to the 1600s were really rather different than what is worn today. The modern day kimono is constructed differently than the way that the kosode was constructed in the 1500s into the 1600s. The challenge with cosplaying characters that were from the 1800s on back is that the clothing that they wore was in many cases substantively different than the modern kimono. You had a totally different shape, possibly different fibers, different construction, and even different methods of decorating the fabric. This pale blue kosode, one of several in our collection, is a wonderful example of yuzen dyeing combined with embroidery and couching to create a harmonious overall look. The body panels are a similar width to the sleeve panels, indicating that it likely dates to somewhere around the mid-1700s. The soft crepe sports paste-resist dyed flowing water, dewy grasses, bamboo, pine, and more, while embroidered details convey a sense of refined delicacy throughout the kosode. Tiny birds flit around couched lattices, demonstrating the masterful skills of the kosode's creators. The bottom is padded, which was done to help the kosode flow and trail smoothly around the feet of the wearer. The term kosode refers to small sleeves, meaning the small sleeve opening at the wrist of the garment. Kosode gradually evolved from an undergarment to an overgarment during the Muromachi period from the 1300s to the 1500s. They went from being a plain white wide-bodied robe to a decorated but still wide-bodied robe. There are several key differences between the kosode and the modern kimono. Kosode started out as having wider body panels than sleeve panels. Because of the wider body panels, the sleeve seam is located further down the arm than in the modern kimono. The armpits of the sleeves are closed and have no hoodie or detached waving part of the sleeve like modern kimono have. Modern kimono for women are designed to be long so that they can be tucked up into an ohashori fold at the waist, but kosode were not intended to be tucked up. Many decorating techniques used on modern kimono either didn't exist or weren't used in the same way during the 1300s through the end of the 1600s. 
Since kosode at this time were generally worn by the nobility and samurai families, the fabric was gloriously decorated with various types of embroidery, including couching, in which metallic threads were laid on top of the fabric and attached in designs using tiny stitches. Modern kimono also can incorporate embroidery and couching, but most are not nearly as sumptuously decorated in such a time-consuming manner as the kosode of centuries ago. A technique that revolutionized the kosode toward the end of the 1600s was yuzen dyeing. This technique of paste-resist dyeing was invented by Yuzen Miyazaki in the latter part of the 1600s. Yuzen created this method as a way to replicate his extremely popular and expressive folding fan paintings on clothing. From that point, Kosode would sometimes have a mix of dye work and embroidery, as in the example you see here, while others would stick solely to embroidery. As Kosode became more accessible to the nouveau riche townspeople of the mid to late Edo period, the body panels became more uniform in size with the sleeve panels. This method of construction was more economical, as the kosode could be made from one bolt of narrow-width fabric. Nobles responded to the upstart chonin or townspeople by passing sumptuary laws. The chonin then found workarounds to them by making the obi wider and more prominent. Therefore, the bottom of the sleeve had to be separated from the body panels to accommodate the obi, more so for women than for men. Eventually, the term kosode fell out of favor, replaced by terms like kimono, which means thing to wear, and wafuku, which means traditional Japanese clothing, as opposed to yofuku, or Western clothing. All of these differences are why it's so important to keep in mind the type of garment you're trying to create when cosplaying. While modern kimono are versatile and can be used to create a huge variety of looks, it's pretty much impossible to accurately replicate the look of a centuries-old kosode using modern kimono. Ignoring the differences between the kosode and the kimono ultimately means ignoring a large portion of Japanese fashion history. A lot of that history happened as a result of tensions between the classes, and these tensions ultimately culminated in a civil war that basically shaped the trajectory of the nation of Japan even through today. Unfortunately, accurate information about Japanese fashion from the 1300s through the late 1800s, apart from scholarly works, is not very accessible, and popular media often depict kosode incorrectly. Hopefully, this segment of our exhibition will help you to understand a little better that Japanese fashion has always been dynamic and not static, and why things evolved the way that they did, so that you can become more informed about the media you consume and the characters that you cosplay. Thank you for tuning in to this special exhibition curated by Tangerine Mountain Imports and Designs for Anime Expo Light 2021. We want to thank everybody at Anime Expo for giving us this opportunity, and we invite you to check out the rest of our content for Anime Expo Light this year. We also want to thank the folks at the Fabian Gardens at the Kane County Forest Preserve in Illinois, especially Melissa and Marcus. Of course, we also want to say a big thank you to our model Tiffany, who did such an amazing job bringing all of these characters to life. Lastly, we want to invite you to check out the rest of our kimono-related content on YouTube and also on our socials. You can always find us at our website, too, at tangerinemountain.com. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we're looking forward to seeing you next year.